In this video, we're going to import some Microsoft Excel data uh, into Yerby. So to start that process, you do have to be a Yerby administrator. I'm going to go into the admin section and go to the app databases. So part of that process of uploading and importing Excel data, we're going to import that into the database and we're going to create what we call a Yerby app for that. Now, before we do that, I'm going to show you the file that we're going to import. So a couple key things about the spreadsheet that you import, this becomes your template that you then continue to use to refresh and update that data. So you want your template um, to be in production ready shape before you do the import. That means giving it a, a nice uh, name for your template. You'll see I've got this called sales data sample in this case, but within this workbook, and, and we do want it to be saved as an XLSX, as you'll see when we do the import, we want just raw data, nothing but column row, row one should be nothing but your headers. There should be no blank columns. There shouldn't be any extra header or footer information uh, in the spreadsheet. You'll see we've got our raw data here. And you'll notice that I'm combining multiple sheets together. So if you do have a relationship between sheets, uh, I've got those as separate sheets here. And I've got those sheets named properly as well because you'll see that those names will be used as we import uh, this data. Last thing I recommend you do that, that really will help speed up your imp import is if you do have uh, certain fields like a, a date field or a numeric field is to go through and format all the cells in there and set them up to be uh, numeric or whatever it might be that you'll see that that'll gr greatly speed up um, the import process if you have those things set up correctly uh, in Excel. So I'm going to minimize this. Let's go ahead and do the import. We'll click register new app. In this case, we're going to pick the Excel or CSV app. We'll say next. So the first thing we are going to do is give it a name. We'll call this sales data in this case. We'll say next. And it's going to want us to choose that Excel spreadsheet. So we're going to go out into our downloads folder where I put that Excel sheet. We're going to open that. Now I do have a header row and that is something that we highly recommend. So we're going to go ahead and say yes to that. We're going to say upload. And that's going to be a pretty fast process. And you'll see that it's going to bring us into an environment, a preview. It's going to show us about 100 rows of that data where we can go through and validate and make sure that all of the settings uh, have the information that we need. Now you'll notice the sheet we would ultimately go through and do this on all the worksheets in that. I'm just going to do it on the first one for this example. But the process is to click on that header and see what the data type is and what your validation option is. What this means is we're expecting a number in this particular order number column. And if there is no number or there's something that we don't expect that we're going to zero it out. We're going to put a zero for the number. Let's go through and click through. This is a real this is a real. So we're going to put zeros there. Those are typically fine. All these are real numbers. Now this should be a date. And you'll notice that we did detect that as a date. And by default, if a date is blank, then we're going to put that as a null, which is a pretty appropriate thing to do for a date. Strings are fine. They don't really need any type of error checking on a string. And let's just go through and look at a couple of other ones here. And they're all fine. Now let's say we did want to change something. Let's say... Uh, this order number that we did want to change it to a uh, string. We could do that. And I wouldn't recommend that in this case because this is a number. But we could set it as a string and we could set a different validation option. And what we would do is click this update button in order to reflect that change. Now, since this one has everything set up the way I want, and of course you would go through and look at the other sheets, um, I'm going to go ahead and process this. And as I process this, it's going to do a validation check and make sure that all the columns are what we expect and you'll see it just uploaded that uh, data set pretty quickly uh, for larger data sets that would take a little bit more uh, time there let's go ahead and go back into app databases and you'll see that we have our sales data there and if you go into the architect and we'll cover this when we talk about the architect it automatically created a sales data app for us and you'll see that it brought in all of those column headers in those tables as the report tree by default. Um, so this was a successful update, and that, that's the process for uh, importing 
Microsoft Excel data. If you have any questions about this or run into any issues, contact us at support at yerby.com.